show you how this functions. Now, a couple things. Everything I did was single shear. Now, I'm not really sure how well this is going to work. Okay? Just some threaded rod, right? Down to some brackets I cut on my plasma table. A couple just bent pieces of metal here, welded on. I'll finish that. So, it's got a pedal, and this pedal is a foot pedal. <laughs> you can get it. Yeah, that's not funny. Attached to an arm, pivots over here. I actually just tacked the bolt on, welded it on a little bit on this side. And what this does is it basically pulls down on this arm. So basically the action is this, and it squeezes the metal. So what I'm gonna do right now is disassemble this, and I'm gonna sand this and paint this because this is like a screen door spring I bought from a hardware store. This is just a piece of all thread, a couple of barrel adjusters so I can you know, move this up and down. I'm not really sure if I'm gonna want to, you know, trim this down, because technically I don't need this whole arm. I really only need it to here. But I'm concerned that I might want more leverage on it, so I may want to move the bracket up. So for right now, we're gonna leave that right there. I have absolutely no idea. So I'm gonna sand this all out. You guys don't need to watch that. I'm gonna disassemble it in its entirety. I'm going to paint everything up, and then I'm going to reassemble it, and then we're going to give it a go. So, we'll be right back. Boo! All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, threw a really quick coat of paint on this. A couple things with that. Really cold in here, running a bullet heater. It's probably 28, 30 degrees, something like that. Not my best idea to paint this, and the paint I had was Chevy Orange. So, for you Chevy guys, thumbs up if you're a Ford guy, I guess. Um, so, we're going to throw this thing together. And um, I'm going to put you on time lapse, and I'm just going to bang it together, and then I'm going to show you what I like about it, the parts that I designed, and I'm also going to show you how it works. assembled uh, runny runny paint and all so basically all we're doing is these are harbor freight shrinker stretchers right these are hand operated you would normally put them in a vise bolt them to a table and, and then you would pull the arms down so all we're doing is employing a foot pedal to do that so um, like I explained before this is basically pieced together from stuff I had left over. I, I get it. Most people don't have this quote stuff left over. Um, I do own a plasma table, so I could cut out the feet and I cut out the top plate, but you could cut out the top plate um, with a sawzall or a death wheel, you know, four and a half inch angle grinder. These things are super cheap. You know, the pedals, you just can make a square that'd be fine the plates don't have to be angled they can come straight out you could use a piece of tubing um, anything to affix this you know my question to myself was do these need to be double shear um they're single shear now i don't think that they need to be double shear i don't think there's enough pressure down but i've never used this so this may change quickly so let's give it a go i'm going to try to get you guys in closer so we're over the top a little bit. Um, the shrinker stretchers have marks on them. 
arrows going out or arrows going in basically like this or like that and that tells you is it going to stretch the metal or is it going to shrink it so technically this is just some 18 gauge i just cut off a sheet and put it in the uh, break i went well over 90 degrees so um, i failed at that but we're going to try this together i've actually never tried this and we're going to see how it does so the idea is you would put the metal in and you would push down on the pedal and this is not on very good ground so you squeeze and you squeeze and you squeeze and you squeeze and you're you're gently not not not, not a lot at a time you're gonna keep moving with it and then eventually what you're gonna notice is your metal start to curve this is definitely going to need feet drilled into the bottom of it to make it more level my garage floor is absolutely atrocious so what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep doing this and what we're gonna find is this is going to be pulling the metal away slowly making a bend so as I don't know if you guys can see this but there's there's little teeth marks in here where it's pulling the metal pulling the metal pulling the metal you could keep going on this and basically bend this into a 90 at some point now you wouldn't want to do it all in one spot you need to pull it apart it'll only stretch so much that's what she said so right in the jaws and also we can adjust with the barrel connector to bring this down closer there's an adjustment here so and that's you were just on the pedal and honestly if it was on a more stable floor this would be actually go pretty quickly So as you can see, it just becomes more curved, right? And that's the stretcher portion. We're basically stretching this and pulling it apart. Now we're gonna go over to the shrinker. Shrinker, same theory. Instead of pulling it out, it's gonna push it in and it's gonna shrink it. So let's see if we can't do that. Oh, we're moving all over the place because this thing is not on level ground. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna put feet on this. Level it out. So what we got going on here is we've pulled this together, therefore making this curve. So does this little machine work? Yeah, it works. Does it need some feet to level it? Cause I'm on concrete that's all lumpy and it kind of moves around a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna think I'm gonna thread and tap the bottom and I'm gonna put feet on it so I can adjust it. All right guys. Just a little interruption before I finish the video. Um, I understood that the rocking was an issue and my floor is pretty terrible. So here's what I did to solve that. A couple pieces of angle iron all the way around, kind of disperse um, the forces on the ground and spread it out to maybe because the floor is so uneven. And also I threw these little casters on here 
That way, I can tip it. I can tip it forward, and I can roll it around. So back to the video. Boop. Tubing. You could build the base out of um, angle iron, whatever you got laying around, and then the top. You just want them opposed, so they slide by. It doesn't matter what you're using for pedal, right? You could have a square here. You could have a, a, a piece of just flat anything. And then this could be technically round tubing as well on the bottom where the, where the lever arm is, as long as you got a hole in it. And what I used in here, what I welded in was I found some, some spacers from some shocks that came with a, a, a Jeep kit. So I basically drilled a hole through it, welded it in, and that way I could at least put some lubrication in there. And it actually has, it's not really a bushing, but it's a bushing. But there's no bearings in something like this. There's no uh, bronze bushings. You could do that. I've seen guys on YouTube build these things and they're crazy extravagant with bearings and stuff. You're not moving this that fast. I just don't feel it's needed. Now, if you use this every single day of your life and you were making a living with it, would you want something with a bearing or a bronze bushing? Probably. Just for wear, right? I got steel on steel. It's single shear. We could have made it double shear. I don't feel that that's necessary. This is doing the job, right? I mean, this, this, that's the proof. It's doing the job. So I appreciate you stopping by to Mad Ginger Customs. Please like and subscribe. I'm actually going to put this to use. I may modify this. Next time you see me using this, it's going to be doing sheet metal on a 1950 Ford shoebox. We currently have a bunch of uh, lubricant in the cylinders. We're going to try to get that thing fired up. That's a video you're not going to want to miss. And uh, thanks for watching.